Welcome to a guy and his laser and my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to kind of go through the steps that I take um, to set up my files and get them ready for the DTF printing process. I have multiple forehead HJD printers and uh, various branded shaker oven units, but the HJD printers use the Print EXP and main top softwares. Uh, Print EXP controls the printer. Main top is the rip. And I will show you step by step my process from getting the game sheet from a customer, setting up the white color layer, spot color process layer uh, with the white layer, and getting it ready for the uh, main top software. And I'll get into main top a little bit and show you a couple features that we use. Um, here in house so uh, to start this customer um, has sent us this gang sheet here uh, this gang sheet is currently 20 inches 20.3 inches wide by 68.89 inches tall we have a 20 24 inch printer uses 24 inch film we sell 22 inch wide gang sheets uh, gives us an inch on each side either for color bars or for um, just uh, space give yourself a little margin so uh, first thing you do is I operate in Photoshop others use Corel draw and some other softwares but main top requires you to add a spot uh, a spot process channel a spot channel um, for the white layer uh, you have to name it something specific so that the software can read it so first thing I'll do is I'll take the magic wand tool make sure that your contiguous up here is turned off or else it won't select <coughs> excuse me <coughs> or else it won't select all the blank area so I click the blank area and I have a Photoshop action set up for this to make it very easy uh, DTF CMYK here or DTF RGB that'll kind of do this automatically but this time I'm going to show you what I do um, so we're going to select a blank space we're going to go up to select and select inverse that's going to select everything that's not blank we're then going to go to select going to modify and contract uh, we're going to do one pixel in so that your white layer ends up one pixel within the color behind it we're going to go to image mode we're going to convert it to CMYK color once we do that we can come over to the channels tab and if channel channels isn't showing you can go to window and click channels and it should pop up we're going to hit the three little bars, hit new spot channel, and this is not going to be what it defaults to if you haven't done this before. We are going to name the layer W1. Your color is red because it's easiest to see, and the solidity needs to be set to 100%, and we're going to hit OK. Now, if we scroll out of this gang sheet, this will show you everywhere where there's red, that will show you where it's going to lay white down. If we unselect this W1 layer, you can kind of see the difference and where it's going to lay the white. We're going to go to File, Save As. We're going to save it in my Downloads folder, and I'm just going to call this Tutorial 1. We want to save this as a TIFF file. And we're going to click Save. Uh, none of this has to be changed. Make sure your settings are set to the same. One day I came in and it was set to zip for some reason. Um, but we're going to make sure it's set to none. We're going to hit OK. We're going to give this a little bit of time to save. Now these files are large in size. Uh, this one is probably uh, this one's probably decently sized. Um, 500 megabytes to a, to a gigabyte. Um, once we do that, we can go into main top DTF software here. Uh, we're going to go to file. We're going to go to page setup. And we said there was a 70 inch sheeter, so I'm going to give myself 71 inch. I make this 23 inches wide. Hit OK. 
Um, a neat little uh, trick while you're in here is you're kind of scrolling this instead of hitting control plus or anything to zoom in you can hold the control button down and move your mouse wheel up or down to zoom in or zoom out so what I normally do is I normally put a name at the top of the sheet so I know what it is when it prints it will not put a white layer behind this just so you know I'm going to call this tutorial one and I just put this here so that it prints it so I know what the uh, what order this sheet belongs to so I'm going to scroll out I'm going to go to import picture right here I'm going to import the tutorial one um, paper adjust off we don't want it to rotate hit OK and you can see that we've got it here now if you look down here and it's going to look very pixelated. That's completely normal with RIP software. Uh, I have the display settings set to low so it doesn't bog down the computer. That is obviously not the way it's going to print. But I can't tell here if this is within our margin lines or not. So one useful tool, especially when you're putting multiple images down, is I go to View and Wireframe Only. This shows me exactly where it is. So as we could see, it's just right there but if I looked up here I've got a little room up here so I'm gonna scroll this up because you don't need a bunch of space between there and that gives us plenty of room down here as you can see we have plenty of room on the sides now this file is set up uh, the wireframes view only that's it's not gonna print the wireframe so now that this is set up we can go ahead and go to print and we're gonna print to file um, obviously it shows that I got HS printer, I-3200 print heads, all that other good stuff that they set up when you get your printer installed. You want to make sure mirror is checked here so that it prints mirror. We're going to hit properties. Um, there's four options, four pass, six pass, and eight pass profiles on here. Uh, four pass is pretty terrible. Six pass is what we generally print. I have one or two customers that request the eight pass it just lays it down a little more dense higher resolution tells you that our page size was a 23 by 71 um, we can go to the white ink settings but once you set this stuff there's no need to uh, change any of this um, the hjd had set this up for 70 percent uh, the channel one spot color that's what we set up in photoshop um, once we back out of that, you can hit auto set paper. That'll auto set the print size to your page size. Hit OK. And we're going to print the file. We're going to call this tutorial one. Tutorial one. We're going to hit enter. We're going to give it a minute to crash on us. That is excellent. Let's try to open that. Oh, we got a little error here. What happened to our print exp or our main top? Oh, print exp is already open. I tried opening print exp again. So we're going to open main top. Let's go ahead and I'm going to fly through this since we already know 23 by 73. Okay. We're going to add our text again how inconvenient literally I've never had the software crash like that but we're in some real life stuff right now so all right tutorial one let's try loading this up again wireframe only so I can see it line this up on the top we're good there good there print to file properties <laughs> tutorial one replace it okay that time it didn't crash it is saving this takes a little bit we're going to speed through this process here
Now that we have our file saved, we can go to print exp. It should now show up in our files here. Looks like we've got tutorial one right here. It brought it over as an, a six pass. Here's our image right here. It's mirrored. It's gonna print this first and make its way up. And we're good to go. So that is how you set up a file for print exp uh, in main top and add your white layer. Uh, there will be more tutorials to come, um, some maintenance videos on the HJD equipment, and anything that I know regarding DTF printing. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and I'll be sure to answer. Have a good night.